Welcome back, fellow explorers. I'm thrilled to have you join me for the second installment of Project Solara, our journey through the wonders of speculative evolution inspired by the incredible work of Project Mirror. In our last episode, we introduced you to the Verdantara system. Today, we're diving even deeper, showcasing the first life to evolve in Verdantara's oceans. One of the first forms of complex life evolves when groups of single-celled photosynthesizers come together to form large colorful mats, coating the ocean's surface. There will be many subspecies all with a variety of hues. We will name these organisms Chromophyta, and they will be the perfect food source for Verdantara's young ocean. As of now the Chromophyta represent an untapped food source, therefore many new forms of life might evolve to take advantage of it. One such creature will be the Tetrapodius. This will be one of the first multicellular creatures to evolve. It will have four long tentacles to guide pieces of Chromophyta into its mouth. This creature will be very basic and unspecialized. Therefore it will not have a through gut and will have to eat and expel waste from the same hole. Tetrapodius will be very small, only 0.5 to 1 centimeters. Therefore it will be classified as zooplankton, because even though they can beat their arms to slightly influence their direction, they will not be able to swim against the current. Tetrapodius will reproduce via broadcast spawning, releasing mass amounts of gametes into the water with only some of them producing a new organism. Once it releases its gametes it will die, for this reason it will only live one Earth week. But Tetrapodius is not the only zooplankton to evolve at this time. A small creature with four arms will emerge alongside Tetrapodius. These creatures' four appendages will be lined with hair-like protrusions serving as a form of external gill structure. Although this creature will not be able to see, it will have multiple nerve clusters to somewhat sense movement. Therefore, it will be able to search for prey and forage for Chromophyta. This creature will grow to be quite large compared to other creatures at this time, growing up to 2.5 centimeters. Like Tetrapodius this creature will reproduce by broadcast spawning. It will release gametes twice every Earth week and will do so for one Earth month until it dies. We will name this creature Aquilotharidae. At this time in Verdantara's history the oceans will be teeming with primitive life, therefore the organisms will begin to specialize. One of the first new creatures to evolve will be descended from the Aquilotharidae. It will be much more streamlined and its posterior will flatten to form a basic tail. Its ancestors had multiple nerve clusters which in this creature will evolve into simple eyes. It will retain its ancestors' tendrils used for respiration, but they will begin to lose their function. It will grow a larger mouth able to eat large amounts of zooplankton and chunks of chromophyta. This creature is much larger than its ancestors, growing up to 4 centimeters and with its newfound swimming abilities it will no longer be classified as zooplankton. The creature will still use broadcast spawning as its main form of reproduction. We will call this creature Quadropterus. However, when the Quadropterus evolve, the Tetrapodius will have no way of protecting itself, therefore this creature will evolve to utilize chitin to form a shell for protection. It will lose the free-floating lifestyle of its ancestor and will instead use its arms to drag itself along the sea floor, eating all the sea snow that has been building up. This creature will grow to be quite large compared to its predecessor, growing up to 5 centimeters in size. This creature will still use broadcast spawning as its main form of reproduction, but since its mouth is facing the seabed its gametes wouldn't travel far. Therefore the location in which these creatures release their gametes will move to the side of the creature, showing early signs of a single direction of movement. These unique creatures will be called turtolithids. But another ancestor of the Tetrapodius will opt to stay a free-floating organism. It will have branched off of the same evolutionary line that gave rise to the turtolithids therefore it will inherit its chitin-based shell. It will also have evolved one basic eye, able to sense movement and basic shapes. It will use its eye to more effectively feed on zooplankton like the Aquilitharidae, but it will also use its arms to rip off pieces of Chromophyta. These creatures will be called Stella Calamaris. Stella Calamaris will be quite large growing up to 9 cm. Since Stella Calamaris is so large it might evolve a form of blood, perhaps iron-based. 
This will give the creature a reddish hue as it has yet to evolve a skin. Stella calamaris will retain its ancestors' broadcast spawning releasing mass numbers of gametes into the water. However Stella calamaris might evolve to release their gametes into the water at the same time as all other individuals of its species, giving their gametes a higher likelihood of surviving. With these new shelled creatures comes a new food source, which some descendants of Quadropterus might specialize to feed on. To each shelled organisms one descendant of Quadropterus might evolve a powerful beak to crush the shells of its prey. Its tail will grow a flattened fin-like structure resembling a heterocircle tail fin. Its eyes will migrate to the top of its head and will enlarge to help this creature find its prey. In order to hunt its prey, it will need to be much larger growing up to 11 centimeters. It is for this reason that this creature will evolve blood. Its blood will be iron-based therefore it will have a red hue. When this creature is ready to mate, instead of broadcast spawning it will actively seek out a mate to breed with. It will have much success thanks to its large eyes. We will call this creature Quadropteran. With all these new creatures it is reasonable to assume that Chromophyta would be evolving as well. Maybe a clade of Chromophyta evolved to grow on the seabed. They will grow to be tall seaweed-like organisms. These creatures will come in one general hue, purple. Some species might opt for different coloring, but the majority of species will be purple. It is for this reason we will name these organisms Purpurophyta. With the evolution of Purpurophyta comes yet another new food source which a descendant of Quadropterus might take advantage of. This creature will elongate its body into an eel-like shape allowing it to squeeze through the groves of Purpurophyta. It will have mandible-like appendages for ripping off chunks of Purpurophyta. This creature will be large enough to need blood, growing up to 9 centimeters. Its blood will also be iron-based giving this creature a pinkish-red color. This creature will have a unique way of reproducing. When it is time to reproduce, groups of these creatures will gather releasing their gametes in a frenzy alongside others of its kind. This will give each gamete an extreme likelihood of forming a new creature. These creatures will be extremely successful wherever Purpurophyta grow. We will name these unique creatures Serpenticeptoros. The creatures of Verdantara have evolved over a period of 120 million years, populating the oceans with life. In the next episode we will look at the open oceans and what amazing creatures will evolve there. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment with your thoughts and suggestions for future episodes. And remember, the wonders of Project Solara are just beginning.